Good evening and happy Thanksgiving. Now I'm going to ask you to sit down. We have much to be thankful for in our parish, but one of the things that we have to be thankful for is once again we have a net team with us for the year uh, for the next eight months. So some of you will be called upon to help house these young people uh, as they stay with us for the next eight months. We have uh, Francis St. Pierre. He is from Ontario. We will retrain him. We have Carson <laughs> Lepense, who is also from Ontario. We will retrain him. I, one of you is from Ottawa. Which one? Extra retraining, okay. <laughs> Anna Spitzhoven, who is from the Netherlands. Ali um, Guthrow, she is from Nova Scotia, won't require any retraining at all. They think just like us, <laughs> right? Uh, Maya Zeglars, um, and she's from Ontario, but she has a Polish background, which will make some of you very happy. Uh, and then we have Bernadette Van den Bush, who will require the most retraining, because she's actually from Alberta. <laughs> These are our six young netters who will be with us for the year. Please make them welcome. And if you want to know any more about them, ask, okay? Take it upon yourselves to get to know them over this coming year, okay? Let's go. So let's stand and pray. We come together as God's holy people, so let us gather in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. Amen. Coming together as God's family, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. And so we pray together. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and remains with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved, my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleaned it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and he hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. The word of the Lord. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. It sent out its branches to the sea and its shoots to the river. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Why then have you broken down its walls? so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit. The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see, have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Then we will, we will never turn back from you. 
Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable. If there is any excellence and there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son. They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants, who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. 
Today we have these two concepts at odds with each other, and it's the vineyard of the Old Testament and it's the vineyard of the New Testament. Because what it, Jesus is referring to in the gospel today is that the vineyard is being taken away from the house of Israel and given to another. And sometimes I think we lose track of that in our own minds because you and I are the ones that the vineyard has been leased to. And the vineyard that has been leased to us is the world. Not just a little part of the world, but the entire world. The watchtower is the church. But you notice in a vineyard, very few people work in the watchtower. They work in the fields. In Vatican II, one of the things that was prominent in Vatican II was the active, and, uh, the active participation of the laity in the life of the church. To work in the vineyard. To be about the work in the vineyard. The Vatican II, well, you know, it ended in the 60s and we're still working on that part. How well are we working in the vineyard? Are we giving to God the produce of the land? Or are we producing anything? And sometimes we have to stop and reflect upon that because we're the laborers, all of us together. You've heard me say it many times, if we're just waiting for Sister and I to get the work done in this parish, we're hooped, right? You know, Sister may be a powerful prayer person, and she prays a lot, but guess what? We need a lot of prayers. And more than Sister can provide. So are we praying for each other? Are we taking care of each other? Today I had a wedding here, and I love annoying the people of God. You've probably figured that out by now. Well, you see, one of the things is, is that in married life, if a couple's marriage fails, it's the fault of the entire community. Not just the couple. It is the fault of the entire community when a marriage fails. Because the community is there to support them, sustain them, encourage them, guide them along the way. And the reality is, by the time that couple is having problems and they get to me, they've already been through half the congregation. Did they get the support from the congregation that they needed? Were they uplifted? Were they encouraged? where they support it. Most of you know something about gardening. If you don't stake the tomato plants properly, they're not going to grow properly. Same as a married couple. They need those stakes to support them and sustain them so that they can produce a bountiful harvest. You see, that work is not done by the priests, it's not done by deacons, it's not done by the religious. It's done by their family and friends. They're the support. They're the people in the vineyard. Because more often than not, I may be standing on the watchtower, but I'm not going to see it. But you will. And there's the challenge. Today we celebrate, or this weekend, we celebrate Thanksgiving and all the blessings and the graces that we have received. But do we give thanks for family and friends that have supported us? Do we give thanks for family and friends who have corrected us? Do we give thanks for family and friends that have been there with us through our trials and our tribulations? And do we thank God that we were able to be there for others? To fulfill our obligation of being full and active participants in the building up of the kingdom of God. You see, the vineyard is there before all of us. 
And I don't know what part of the vineyard you've been put in charge of. I know what part of the vineyard I've been put in charge of. I get to stand on the watchtower. But my job is to yell at you all when the enemy is coming. The enemy is all around us. The trials, the tribulations, the enemy is all around us. Are we supporting each other? As you sit down to celebrate your Thanksgiving meal this weekend, what is it you're going to be thankful for? Who are you going to be thankful for? And if there's somebody out there that you really need to thank, maybe it's time to call them and say thank you. God took the vineyard away from the Israelite people and gave it to all of us. All of us. And the vineyard is this world that is all around us and all those people contained within it. And there is much, much work to be done in the vineyard. And God comes looking for his produce. And the primary produce God is looking for is our praise, our worship, our obedience. Love God above all things and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Let us stand and make our profession of faith as we pray the Apostles' Creed together. So let us tell each other what it is we believe as we pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us lift up our voices and make our requests known to God. That the evangelizing work of the church may bear fruit for the glory of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all people may have their hearts open to the word of God spoken by his messengers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who suffer from anxiety may find comfort and peace in Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all travelers, especially those traveling for Thanksgiving, for safe travels, peace-filled gatherings, and the grateful remembrance of God's blessings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here may be strengthened by our communion in Christ, the true vine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially Antoinette Rose, Carmen Nilsson, Frank Salop, Heather Doddridge, and Father Stephen Gadafani. May they be at peace in God's heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of peace, we ask that you look with favor upon the petitions we offer, if we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life.
By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse us of all of our sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifice sacrifices instituted by your commands, that through the sacred mysteries, which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you were pleased to redeem us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And well in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified of God who loved the human race, and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for the disciples so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, in whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may count now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church throughout the world by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, William, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the debtors' faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil grace to grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you, call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray the prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. If you'd all like to have a seat. <coughs> Bishop McGratton is in Rome for the Synod on Synodality. And at the same time, you know how technology is? He has a letter. On the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi on October 4th this week, the Diocese of Calgary began the path of renewal that will extend until 2027. A pastoral letter was issued by Bishop McGrath on that day, and he's asked us to read this letter to you at the Sunday Masses this weekend. The letter of the bishop begins. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, on the memorial of St. Francis of Assisi, we begin a pathway of pastoral renewal in the Diocese of Calgary. What is a pastoral renewal, and why did we decide to launch it on this day? A pastoral renewal is an invitation to the Church of the Diocese of Calgary to renew and strengthen our commitment as individuals, parishes, and as a diocese to live the life that Christ calls us to in the midst of our world. We respond to his call through our baptism, our personal witness of the faith, and our desire to participate in the mission that Christ entrusted to the church. Our pastoral renewal is being launched on the Memorial of St. Francis of Assisi. It coincides with the opening of the first session of the Synodal Assembly in Rome, where I am currently present with Pope Francis, my brother bishops, and delegates from around the world. The life of our diocese is united with the Universal Church, as witnessed through my participation at the Synod, but also in our embarking on this pastoral renewal. It is in learning the synodal way of walking with others on the path of salvation that we encounter one another and experience together the presence of Christ in our midst and in those whom he has called us to serve. While praying in the little church at St. Damien, St. Francis was drawn to the San Diamo cross, and from there heard the voice of the Lord saying to him, Repair his house, which is falling apart. While mindful of the chapel that was in disrepair, St. Francis was much more aware of the call of Christ to lead the church on a path of prayer, penance, and renewal. He did this by following him more intently and in a joyful humility, living his life and offering his work as an authentic witness of Christ to all his brothers and sisters. In a similar way, through this pastoral renewal, Catholics in the Diocese of Calgary are being called to intensify our following of Christ through these three areas of pastoral priority that will help us as the church to become more intentional in walking with the people. They are the fruit of our diocesan phase of the Synod and a year-long process of further prayer, dialogue, and discernment. In the coming years, 
this pastoral renewal will call us to be intentional in living our baptism, in the orientation of the parishes and the diocese, in being formed as missionary disciples of our Lord, to be a church of encounter and witness, to grow in our ability to listen to people's lived experiences, to be more present to one another through our shared faith, and to be more authentic in our witness to Christ in word and deed. Finally, to strengthen the human family in our own homes, in our parishes, in our schools, and in places where the Lord sends us so we might learn to accompany people at all stages of life. This pastoral renewal, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, will enable us to respond better to the call for a deeper conversion and experience the renewal that is needed in our world today. As we embark on this path of renewal in the diocese, may we share in the zeal and passion of St. Francis in following Christ, and may we imitate all the saints who accepted their call to renew within the Church by choosing the path of courage, fidelity, and humility in being one with the Lord. Sincerely yours in Christ, signed Bishop William T. McGratton, Bishop of Calgary. As the bishop has encouraged us all to embark on this pastoral renewal as individuals and as a parish, let us ask the Holy Spirit to bless our diocese and all of us as we respond to the Lord's invitation to follow him more intently and joyfully. Pamphlets, will, pamphlets in today's bulletin, which provide more information on the renewal, are there for you to read and meditate upon. Also in the bulletin is the bishop's letter for you to take and read quietly yourself. Perhaps have a conversation with someone about this renewal. You may also check the website of the diocese and our website for more information. There will be more materials that will be made available as we progress towards 2027. Let us rise. If hospitality would come forward. The Lord be with you. Thank you very much. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel by your life. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. And in thanksgiving, can we once again show our appreciation for our net team? <laughs> Just so you all understand, this is Southern Alberta. We're a little weird. It might take you a while to adapt to us, but please be patient with us, pray for us, and we will pray for you. God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend. Please remember, turkey makes you sleepy. Number 610.